Hey guys, it's Tim from Success Insider here, and today I've got a special guest joining us. His name is Martin. Hey, say hi, Martin. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> awesome. So before we start, just would like to give Martin an intro just so you can really grasp him for who he really is. So Martin is an aerospace engineer, a break dancer, a kickboxer, and right now an entrepreneur. But that is not the special thing about him. What is unique about Martin is that he's always found the right mentors to teach him. Martin believes that we all deserve to learn from the best. Unfortunately, not everybody is privileged to be born amongst the rich and powerful. Luckily, connecting with influential people who can change your life for the better is easier than most people think. And Martin's mission is to show you how to attract great mentors, and that's why he's with us today. Martin, welcome to the Success Insider Show. Wow. Thanks for the introduction, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's amazing to have you on today. So, Martin, um, tell us more about your background and how you really got to where you are today. Hmm. Sure. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Bulgaria, in a very small uh, town. And um, I remember that when I was 13, uh, it was the first time I, I found something I was really passionate about. Until then, I was trying many different things. And what I got really passionate about was breakdancing. So I, I started dancing and uh, basically did that for about 10 years. It was my life, uh, it, it was um, my passion, uh, I was doing it every day um, until I decided to go study. I, I wanted to do something more serious in my life, so I decided to go for the most challenging studies there is. At least in my opinion, that's rocket engineering. Mm. And I moved from Bulgaria um, to the Netherlands, in Holland, to study aerospace engineering. And I, I can say this was the most difficult thing I ever done in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and after I graduated, I started working a 9-to-5 job, uh, like many of my colleagues do. And soon I found out that this is not really, um, let's say, made for me. Um, it was difficult for me to fit in. And I, I, missed, uh, I missed the adventure, I missed the traveling, I missed uh, all these things. And this is when I actually found my, uh, let's say, one of my first entrepreneurial mentors, Jim Narain. I found him on the internet and he had a crazy lifestyle of uh, traveling, making videos, uh, courses online, and uh, basically traveling while running a business. Mm -hmm. So this was about a year ago and I decided to follow in his footsteps. And uh, I started doing the same. I started making video courses, uh, selling them online, uh, helping people with basically sharing my hobbies at that time. And right now I'm doing that full time. And uh, every couple of months I live in a different country. And my passion is basically this, finding, uh, helping people find mentors. Okay, hmm. amazing. So how did you go about finding your mentor? I mean, what did you do? Did you do the standard drop them an email? What, what did you do differently? <laughs> Well, I mean, I had I had many mentors. So, like I told you, I was break dancing, and um, and when I was break dancing, I was just a teenager. Like I told you, from a very small town, um, basically there were not many people who were doing what I want to do in that in that area. I had my friends with who we were learning by watching movies on the internet, but um, I've always believed that I should learn from the best. If I'm doing something, why not get the best teacher? And we found out who was the best in Bulgaria, um, and he was later to become a world champion. At that time, he was very good, but not a world champion yet. And I decided that I want to learn from him. So my first strategy initially was to ask my mother to bring me to one of his events. And uh, basically, my mother brought me there, and, and he saw this kid is very um, hungry, he wants to learn. I was not talented at all, uh, actually for the first two years when I was dancing people would tell me to, to give up because I was very skinny and very tall and um, yeah, basically not learning very fast. Mm. But I was very eager to learn, so I think for me when I was finding mentors this eagerness really helped always because the teacher can always recognize um, that um, you want to learn. So what I learned from my first mentor is that he said that every great teacher it's like an open book, um, but everybody who wants, he can go and learn from him or her. Mm. And for me, this was this was the mind shift because um, I realized, wow, um, if I can learn from the best breakdancer, why don't I apply this in everything else I try in my life? Why don't I go and find the best people 
and I really believe that they will be willing to help me. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So mm. how do you go about, you know, because there are so many mentors nowadays, especially the ones you talk about, the best ones, they're yeah. receiving an abundance amount of messages yeah. every day. How can you stand out? You said one of the things you did was to look eager, but is there anything else you do beyond that to get them as your mentor? Oh, well, certainly, Tim. I mean, I totally understand what you mean because to be eager is not enough. Um, and I know that from the other perspective now that I, for example, create online courses and I'm on the other side, I see that many people who recognize you as successful, um, they will usually approach and they will like to get something from you. So they'll send you a message, they'll tell you, oh, what you're doing is great, uh, I like to learn from you, I want to, basically, can you teach me how to do it for free? Mm. And, and I also have done this mistake before, but a much better approach is actually to think how you can contribute value to this person. Let's say you like to learn from him. Don't go directly by asking, um, teach me, but try to, to understand what are they going through in their life, in their personal, professional life. Try to see where you can creatively offer some value mm. and, and approach them from this perspective by being grateful for what they've contributed because, like you say, if they're very successful, they most probably they've done a lot for their particular sport or industry or business. Um, and they've already given a lot, so you want to pay back homage before you ask for something. So I guess first go and contribute and then ask. This will be the different approach that uh, I, will, I use nowadays and I recommend to everybody to use if they want to find mentors. Okay, can you give us like an example of a time you've, you've done that? Just so we can really grasp your, your method of finding mentors. Of course, of course. So, all right. Um, let me see which one will be more, be more beneficial for your audience. Um, I can give you an example of one of uh, my friends which I connect with a mentor. Just so you understand uh, maybe practical, the practicality of it. Okay, so he wants to connect with the New York Times bestselling author. Um, for purposes, sake purposes, I'm not going to mention the name of the author, but anybody who is internationally known and, and um, very powerful. Um, and what I recommended him is to really spend the time to really get to know what is he doing right now, what is he doing for his business, what is his concern, what is his mission. Mm. And by spending some time watching his interviews, and many successful people do a lot of interviews, a lot of articles, and they leave traces of exactly um, what is their mission, what is their passion, what is their problems, or what are they currently working on. And we found out by just doing a little bit of research that his mission is basically to spread his message to more people on the internet. Mm -hmm. He wants to reach more people. And he said that in a couple of different interviews and we realized, okay, so it's very clear what's his mission. Now we just have to find a way to offer value for that. And, and here's where is the catch. It doesn't have to be something of tremendous value. You don't have to go and spend hours on uh, doing something for them for free or you don't have to spend a lot of money to, to buy them presents. Um, what I mean by value is really to offer something which they will see that you thought about them, you realize what their mission is. Mm. And to give a practical example, we checked his social media accounts and we saw that um, his Instagram was good and Instagram for those of you who don't know maybe is a, a platform, social media platform where you can post pictures and quotes and you interact visually with your audience. Um, and we saw that he's posting great content, but only once a week. So we realized, okay, there is a room there for improvement. There is a room where we can help there. And although that my, my friend was not a social media expert, he could quickly um, find a way to contribute value by taking the author's book, getting all the quotes out of the book, and there were about 200 quotes, mm -hmm. and basically outsourcing this to somebody for, I don't remember, for 10, 15, 20 dollars, <laughs> who could put all these, you know, um, all these quotes into nice pictures for the Instagram account. Mm. And yeah, basically we wrote him an email, um, you know, really quickly thanking him for the, for the book he wrote that he changed his life, we inspired him, and just to offer value. We tell him what he could improve with, you know, step, step by step, and also to uh, not, not to, not that he had to ask us to do the work for him. We already did the work for him. And we said, and here are the pictures. You can test it out. 
see how it goes. And um, as as a last last sentence, we just ask um, if you would like to to we have some more ideas for you how you can improve you know your business. Let's meet up and we can talk in life. Uh, I can share some of those with you. And uh, basically, yeah, from this approach, we got a nice meeting with a with a with a writer. And uh, right now, my friend is uh, this writer became a personal mentor of my friend, which um, yeah, is is something which makes me very happy. <laughs> I mean, come on, this is like it's genius, <laughs> it's genius, and it's no surprise you will stand out amongst the masses. Tell me, where do you believe that you know that mindset of yours really comes from? Were you born like this? Like you're almost basically you're pushing outside the box, the norm. Have you always questioned reality like this, or? Did well, something happened. Well, <laughs> I, I was definitely not born like that, <laughs> because uh, for me, this was be, it's always been my passion to connect with this, with this kind of influential people, with people who've already achieved, you know, the level of success that I would like to achieve. Mm. But uh, when I started doing that, I was not very successful, <laughs> because uh, I would actually really try, like what most people try, uh, is to ask for something, and I will never ever get a return. Um, an email and answer and basically it would make me a little bit frustrated. I, I didn't understand why. I really respect this person. He really has the best intentions. I think I'll be the best student, but they'll never um, return the message. And then by trial and error, basically, I found that, wow, just like you said, when I have the mindset of you know just offering value mm. uh, and not actually expecting anything in return. And uh, sometimes when we do that, we will send couple of emails, you know, offering different kind of value. And this is very important key, which, which I learned from my mentor, Peter Sage, is to really um, lower the importance, basically to give, but not to expect the answer, mm. Be- not to expect that they're going to become your mentor. And I don't know how this works, but it, it really does work because when you're really giving um, and not expecting anything in return, like you said, like uh, the guy you interviewed, People can feel it because we, we, ha- we have, I think, a mechanism here mm. which can spot this kind of stuff. So I definitely learned from, um, from my own experience. But then I also spend a lot of time to research this topic, basically, what you're doing. I'll interview people um, who had great mentors. I'll try to see what worked for them. Then I'll try to find all the literature about this topic and try to really go into it and understand, okay, what, what worked, what we didn't work. Um, I'll find any interview I could on YouTube where people are talking about mentors and see what are their tips and uh, what are their insights and basically try to, to make like, you know, like a method to, to really break it down because I believe many people are doing that. Um, um, like sometimes when I give lectures, people come after the lecture and they say, wow, actually I've done this process in my life, but I have never realized that I'm doing it like this. The process of you know researching how you can offer value and then really offering value without asking anything in return, and then they usually will get the offer for something because yeah they were just so genuine. Okay, sure. I'm I'm curious to know, um, Martin, what happens when the curtains go down? You know, how are you like? How do you go about your day? What what really keeps you fueled? What gets you up in the morning? You know. Wow, that's that's a great question, my friend. Um. Well, for me, social, social connections are very important. So for me, I, I live one with, right now with one of my best friends. Um, I try to keep in touch with all my friends, all my clients, and this is really what gives me energy. Mm. So this is definitely one of the things that really um, puts energy in my soul, is to keep connected, 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 connected with my connected. friends, with my family. Uh, I can hear myself, or oh, it's okay. And also, um, when the curtains are down, I usually uh, do meditation. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of my daily habits, which I've been doing now for a couple of years, and it's really beneficial for me. And yeah, what else? <laughs> what I've noticed from just, I mean, every time I speak, speak with you, Martin, um, as I've studied NLP, so we, we usually just check your, your, your facial features and like the, the way you, uh-huh. you react to some questions. And every time you really talk about, you know, finding mentors for your clients, your eyes light up. You honestly like, it's almost like your heart just aligns with this truth. But, you know, I know your personal story, 
people who's really tuning in today don't. How, firstly, let's start with that. I mean, to just give people a little glimpse of what it used to be like back in the days, because I think it's powerful to really just know that. It's incredible, the, the, the journey you've been on. Mm-hmm. So if you don't mind, just, just give a little glimpse um, of your journey. Sure, sure thing, I do with pleasure. I mean, we, we've connected with you and we talked and we exchanged personal stories and uh, you really touched me when you shared your story about how you transform yourself um, and what, in what kind of pathway you were going in your life. And I just felt like obliged also to share my story with because it was similar. Um, so when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, I guess I, get, I, I had inside, basically inside problems with uh, my confidence. Uh, I had problems with my direction in life. And um, I used to hang out with a lot of gangs, so with people who didn't have the best intentions for other people. And I just got up, got caught up in this. And um, and at a certain certain point, I realized that this is not the way I would like to be going because this was basically not going in the direction that I thought it should be right. Mm. And this is the point where I actually started, you know, um, studying more seriously. I took my studies very very seriously. Um, I changed my peer group. I tried to surround myself with people who are actually doing something creatively, not destructively. Um, and I really tried to work on every area of my life in terms of self-improvement. Um, back in the days, people now don't believe it, uh, but I used to have social anxiety uh, really often. Basically, when I was in a new social situation, I uh, would get very stifled. Um, I would be very shy. I, I will, yeah, I mean really afraid and really didn't have the confidence and didn't have the ability to, to connect to, to strangers. Mm. Um, so I, I actually did a couple of things in order to, to get where I am today. Uh, and today I actually, I think I can talk to anybody. I can connect instantaneous connections with everybody I meet. I feel that everybody who I meet is a potential friend and they have the best intentions for me. Um, and this is usually, this was, totally the opposite back in the days. Uh, so maybe I can share like three simple things that I did in my life okay. which maybe can help other people who might be experiencing the same problems because I think this is really something that they can fix if they really want to do it. Yeah, by yeah? all means, go. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, so the first thing I did is I stopped drinking alcohol and I believe that alcohol might be fun, you know. Um, I don't have to pay anything against alcohol, but in terms of social anxiety, I think it's not the right thing to use in order to uh, unwind or to feel more relaxed because it's kind of like a fake courage or fake confidence and it doesn't really allow you to develop your inner confidence. So I, I will advise people if they have social anxiety and they want to improve on that, it's really to, to cut on the, uh, the alcohol and try to you know be themselves. Um, the second thing I would advise is actually to go and <laughs> practice social skills. Uh, in every every area, basically, in the daytime, in the shop, at school, in university, at work, in, in the bar, uh, everywhere, because like social skills is, is kind of like the muscles. Mm. If you want to develop them, you have to really practice them. And the third thing which really helped me and uh, has had a profound difference in my life is to do daily meditation. Um, and I believe that meditation really helps you relax and you know become more satisfied with yourself but also to accept yourself as you are and really to not get your um, how can I say fulfillment or permission from the outside world but really give yourself this self-love self-acceptance and and, and and when you do that you actually don't care about what other people think about you um, because you're already satisfied from yourself because back in the day I used to do all those things wrong for I would I would drink in order to get confidence. I wouldn't talk to strangers because I was afraid, and then I wouldn't meditate, and I really expect uh, to get everything from the outside. Mm. And with those three things, in really um, a couple of weeks already, I could see the improvement. In a couple of months, my social anxiety really started to decrease tremendously, and in in a couple of years, it completely went away um, to the to the point where in four years I just had one instance. A couple of weeks ago, actually, and it was good, so I could remember how it feels to to be in this not very pleasant state. So yeah, this is my story about <laughs> in my in terms of social skills. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, when me and Martin first spoke and he told me about his story, I just, I could connect with you so much. And I believe everything in life happens for a reason. And um, I, I believe I'm supposed to have connected with Martin. Your story in regards to social anxiety, hanging around with gangs. I was just like, am I speaking with a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can just relate to your story so much. And um, I think it's incredible people who go through this transformation journey. But I believe what's really sad is that there are people who are really stuck in pain, mm. let's say, with social anxiety, confidence issues, but they remain stuck due to their beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. So the question I've got for you is that what do you believe really sets you apart? Because I know there are people in my old peer group who are still there because they can't get themselves out. So what did you do differently? I mean, what do you believe in? You believe that is getting you these results nobody else can get or very few people can get. Yes, yes, yes. That's a great question. That's a great question, and I, I've also tried to to realize it myself. You know what 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 is different to me when I was analyzing. You know how to connect with those successful people. Why, why is not everybody doing it? For me, it was so clear that everybody can do it. I don't do anything special. And then I started, you know, looking back at my 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 whole life until now to realize if there's any pattern of uh, everything I was doing, and I realized um, there is. I guess two things that for me um, are making the biggest difference. The first belief I think is that I can learn and become good at everything. Everything I, I put my attention and focus to is my primary belief, I guess, I can become exceptionally good at. And um, and I didn't I didn't have this belief always. Uh, I, like I told you, when I started breakdancing, um, the first two years, everybody was doubting me. From my family to my friends to everybody in the in the breakdance world, will give me the external feedback that this is not made for me. Mm. But I uh, I really want it so much that I will just keep on learning, keep on practicing, keep on surrounding myself with other people, finding the right teachers, doing everything I, it took in order to 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 learn it. And what what was funny in about five years in, in, while I was doing that, when people met me, they'll tell me that I'm a very talented dancer that, uh, wow, you, you were born like that. And, and for me, it totally didn't make sense. I was like, uh, people were telling that I should be not doing it, and now people were telling that I'm talented, like, uh, okay. <laughs> but, but I realized that if you, if you really believe it and you put this initial time and effort, you can get good at anything. And then I went to study engineering, and I applied the same belief. First of all, my teachers will tell me that engineering was totally not for me. Um, and when I went to my first year in university, I couldn't understand anything. It was basically, um, uh, I would listen at, uh, in the lecture rooms and it was like Chinese and I don't understand Chinese, you know, like totally different language. And I was actually thinking of quitting. Like I, I, I said, well, this is totally not for me. Maybe they were right. Mm. But I kept on doing it and, and, and a couple of years down the line, just the same principle. I would just go to every lecture. I would take all the notes. I would surround myself with the people who are smart, I'll find the, the best teachers. A couple of years down the line, people were actually, I was organizing small groups where I was teaching people. I was teaching them mathematics, physics, or the difficult subjects, and people would tell me, man, you're very talented at this, you know, like, uh, you, maybe maybe you, you were born like this, how did you win some competitions in mathematics or physics? And, 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 and for me, again, it was the same, same basic, like you said, the same mirror, I was seeing like, Two different things like I put so much effort and time into it and I really didn't believe I'm good at it until other people start seeing you as being very good because of your effort and time so for me this is this is the number one belief uh, right now I'm basically in online business and I, I believe that um, if I keep on doing what I'm doing I'll become extraordinarily good because I'm gonna find the right people I'm gonna find the right mentors I'm gonna do the right things and and just time and effort and it, it will pay off in the long term and people will actually come to me and say, man, you're a very good businessman. And I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. So this is the biggest belief, I think. And the second belief is basically that I can connect to anybody um, because I overcome this social anxiety and maybe you can relate as well. Now I believe I can connect to anybody. So I believe that everybody is a human being. So even the most famous people like Bill Gates, Madonna, everybody is a human being. And I believe that we can connect to everybody if we really put the intention and you, we put the work 
um, and that nobody is made for something special. So these two beliefs, I think, have helped me so much so far in my life. Yeah. Okay. So what can people do to really embed this belief? I mean, do you do any sort of like reaffirmations or? Because I know what it's like to suffer from social anxiety and all of a sudden turn around and say, oh yeah, I can connect with anybody. That would be like mm. slap in the face a little bit. <laughs> so what, what do you do? Exactly. Well, there is, I don't think there's any magic pill. Um, I've definitely heard that incantations and uh, this kind of stuff are very useful. In my case, it's really, I believe, in the, that you have to put the time and the work um, and you shouldn't expect some kind of crazy special results. Like, for example, with the breakdance, I, I knew that I'm not naturally talented, but I believe that if I take the, the, the small steps, that the small steps will add up over time. And I, I just knew that eventually I'll be good. I, I was not in a hurry to become very good um, or to win competitions. Um, I tried not to compare myself to other people who are better than me or more talented. And the same with the social skills. The only thing for me, it was like when I realized, oh, maybe I can get out of this because, I mean, even if I saw a little bit of improvement, it gave me the hope. Wow, if I could improve just in a couple of weeks by doing that, mm. and I would definitely advise people, just try it for one month. Whatever you want to improve in, try it for one month. Try to do it every day a little bit. And if you see a little bit of improvement, try to imagine, okay, if I made so much improvement in one month, how much improvement can I make in six months or in one year or in two years or in five years? Wow, and um, and then and, and for me, it's always trying to 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 visualize, you know, how will life be when I when I change? How would life be if I get out of this social anxiety? How will life be if I could go to to a place and I, I could be able to connect with anybody? And not to lie to myself that this will happen in one week or in um, in uh, in one month. No, but it, this really gave me the motivation that every time I'll you know. Uh, get get it again. I was just trying to remind myself the next day when I wake up. Okay, I'm getting closer. It's it's I, it's it's normal to fail. And um, yeah, so don't have very high expectations and be satisfied with the small rewards and small results. Something like that, I guess, would, would be my advice for people. Okay, I'm curious to know what is your favorite quote you've got and why. My favorite. Favorite quote? And My why? favorite quote. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a good one. Um, they they change um, mm -hmm. depending on for for the reason I need it. Um, right now, I'm really um, repeating to myself um, when I have any kind of difficulty. For example. Let's say I go to the gym and the weight is too too hard, or uh, I will be doing something and I think that I cannot do it. I will repeat myself: I'm a champion. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. Uh, I, I'm not sure if somebody has said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it's an official quote, but for me, it Joke really way. works. <laughs> I, I guess um, I like the, the quote from Albert Einstein, the one with um, that. Um, the problem which is created at a level of consciousness, it cannot be solved from that level of consciousness, but you have to be solved from a, a different level of consciousness. I don't remember how to, to really requote it, but uh, do you know which one I mean? Yeah, I, I definitely know, yeah. It's like yeah. the same level of thinking can't be solved at the the same level of thinking it was used to create it or something, something on the lines of that. But yeah. I definitely know what you're yeah. and, saying. And this, this for me is, is, is very helpful because, for example, we know when you're learning something new, um, for example, now I'm building websites and uh, I'm creating different kind of uh, internet digital marketing funnels and it can be very confusing, you know, this is just an example, um, mm -hmm. but I try to remind myself, oh, I'm not yet at the level of, you know, of consciousness or thinking about those kind of stuff. So it's totally normal to get confused, but when I get to the higher level, um, I, I'll be able to solve the problems. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And that's so, what you've yeah. done with mentors, essentially. I mean, you've mm. kind of solved that problem in a different way, right? Everyone's kind of like going, let's say right, and you're going left. You're like, let's try this. Let's try adding value. So yeah. bringing yeah. it to the mentors again, um, you know, I personally know what it's like to find a mentor and how, how hard it can be, especially if they are the best. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
so you know with the amount of countless amount of rejections people have to go through what can mm. you do to really push through the worst times you know when times are hard in life what do you do you mean with regards to mentors or just in general when like... i suppose it relates to every, life in general i mean if you can't push through worst times when finding mentors it's very likely yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't push through other uh -huh. times. <laughs> yeah i mean it, it, it's part of life right um it's not always always going up like like what do you do personally um like i I'm, i used to struggle a lot with that mm. back in the day um there will be a lot of uh little problems and and big problems or whatever in the external reality will happen and it will take me down mm. um so for me i think i think two things really really helped me oh well, okay three things so the first the first two i had is was my social group basically my good friends and my family. So every time there was something difficult going on, I'll reach out to a good friend of mine and he would cheer me up and, um, or my family and basically support group around me, which I think is very beneficial and very, very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, even before there was self-development, I think there were friends and family which will help us with tough times. However, I realized that this is very, you know, like I'm very dependent. And, and in the times when there was nobody around me, um, I didn't have much tools, so to say, to, to deal with the circumstances. And three years ago, I found about meditation, and I found out that um, basically, if something on the outside world was bothering me a lot, and I'll just do 20 minutes of meditation, suddenly there will be a big difference. I wouldn't feel that the thing outside was so important, mm. and I wouldn't take it so seriously, you know? And I realized, wow, so basically, if I have inner peace, then the outside world doesn't matter so much if it's going good or bad. So this was my second thing, but still, uh, sometimes something will happen and even meditation wouldn't help because I'll do meditation and I'll feel relaxed and then again I'll think about the thing which went wrong or some problem and I'll get uh, mad again. And uh, just recently I've learned something which is super, super powerful uh, and again from my mentor Peter Sage which is a very simple exercise that people can do in, when, when something is going wrong and they feel very bad about it and get out of the bad emotions. And it's basically an exercise. Do you think I, I should share it right now? Go for it, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, it's exercise where you can actually transform those negative emotions and to turn them into emotions of gratefulness. And it's a little bit counterintuitive, uh, but I can give you just a quick example. It's a four-step process which Peter taught us, and that is that first you write down what is the event that happened. Um, for example, you know, um, you got a rejection from a call, you know, you're applying for a job, and they call you and they say, uh, sorry, you're not hired, you're, there is another better candidate than you. You know, a rejection, any kind of rejection, a girl can reject you, a boyfriend can reject you, job interview, and rejection not a pleasant emotion, right? So you write down this, uh, what is the event? Actually, somebody just called you and delivered you some news. I mean, you can put it as simple as that, not put too much drama. What is the meaning of the event is the second step? Mm. Well, I'm not going to get that particular job, you know? Or the meaning could be, well, the right job is not there yet, you know? So you're trying to reframe it and really put a meaning which is not too dramatic, like most people will put, oh, I didn't get the job, which means I'm not good enough, which means that uh, I'm not going to get any job at all, and, uh, and you know, they create a big drama around it, and me included, in the past, now I try to, you know, really use the, this exercise when this kind of thing happened, and then the third thing is to write all the lessons that you've learned from that experience, so something negative or bad happens in your life, and you just try to write five lessons which you learn from that. So let's say somebody called you and said um, that you're not hired. What did you learn? Well, maybe next time I'll be more prepared when I apply for the job. Maybe next time um, I'll try to practice for the interview before I go there. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll try to find a better company which fits much more um, my personality and my strengths than this kind of company. Or Maybe I'll have so many interviews lined up that it would, will make a difference if they reject me at one of them. You know, like try to find out the lessons in, because everything has a lesson if you look for it. And the last step, which I think is the most powerful one, uh, and only it alone can change how you feel in a, in a, when, you know, like uh, 
uh, shit hits the fan, like they say, like when like things go wrong. Yeah. It's yeah, it's uh, to really to write all the things that you're grateful for in that situation. Um, so if you get ejected from the job, um, just start writing. I'm, I'm grateful that I have a home where I am staying right now. I'm actually grateful that I have a telephone where people can call me to give me this kind of news. I'm grateful that I have my legs, arms, and I can talk and I speak and I can go to many more interviews. Mm. I'm grateful maybe for everything, basically. And start writing those things because um, it really puts you, connects you with this uh, feeling of gratefulness. And when you feel grateful, you can actually not feel sad. Mm. And um, at the end of the exercise, this is actually the test, if you have really did, did it well, ask yourself, um, would I trade this experience that I had, this negative experience, would I like it not to, be, not to have happened? And if the answer is yes, I wouldn't like to have happened, then try to, to write more gratefulness mm. until you really feel it. But if the answer is like, no, I mean, actually, this was good that this happened. I actually am very grateful that this experience happened, then yeah, you've done it correctly. And I, this is a super, super simple and super powerful exercise. And I just recently shared it with um, some of my uh, friends. And, and I'm, I'm getting those messages from different people. They say, wow. And, and this situation I just told, with you, uh, told you is actually from one of my friends. She said that she got rejected from a job interview. She really needed it. Mm. She did the exercise. And now she feels the situation is totally different. So yeah, I have say this, this, these three things, social, group, friends, family, meditation, and then the powerful exercise from Peter. Amazing. I want to see maybe a question um, when you said, uh, would you not want it to happen? And it, I, um, it made me think of, okay, did I not want the gang situation, drug dealing to not happen, social anxiety? In a way, I wouldn't be here. I, I believe uh. if, I, if it didn't happen, I think it, it drove me further. It's interesting. It just brought back a lot of memories. Then. <laughs> I'm like, wow, there's so many learnings um, in bad times. Mm. And um, yeah, it's a powerful exercise. Give that one a try, guys. <laughs> okay, Martin. Um, so let's start wrapping up here. But if you were to leave everyone who was watching today with the final message, what would it be in regards to finding mentors? Hmm. Hmm. All right. Um, the final message for finding mentors. Mm -hmm. I will say... If you right now you're watching this interview and you really believe that you like to learn something, you might want to learn how to start a business, how to earn money, how to make a great living by contributing value, or you might be pursuing a certain career and you want to, to, to go to the next level, or you might be still in university you know, uh, or at school, but you want to do something in your life. Mm. Um, I advise you look for the people who are already have achieved the level of success that you want to achieve. I mean, and, and success, like Tim says, is up to you. It's your own definition of success. It doesn't have to be mine. But try to find those people who are out there and who are alive today. And they might be you not know, very famous, but they might be in your area. They might be even living in your city, or in your um, environment, or they might be even somewhere on the internet. Mm. And really put this intention that you want to connect with them and you want to like to learn from them. Put the intention out there because setting just the intention, it, it's really powerful. And then um, start finding out how you can offer value in their life. Try to research them, try to find out what are they busy right now and uh, how you can maybe eventually contribute something to them. Um, if, for example, you find out, okay, the potential mentor that I want to connect with is an action taker. They love people taking action. Do that. Show them that you're an action taker. Show them that you um, apply their advice if they have any advice out there. Um, and really reach out. Reach out in, in this way what we're talking during this interview. Reach out by offering value, not expecting anything in return. And I can promise you that if you do that, really, people will be so grateful and they will be so amazed with your approach that they will like to meet you they like to get to know you. They want to actually help you to achieve the level of success that you want to achieve. Because what I've seen many, many times from my experience and experience of my friends and clients is that successful people really want to give back. They really want to contribute. They actually really want to share 
their lessons and they want to share it with people just like you, people who are driven, motivated, and people who actually bring their legs to the next level. Hmm. Amazing. Wow. <laughs> okay, guys, you heard Martin. Take action on that advice. That's a solid advice. Martin, you're a guy who speaks truly from the heart, just the sort we like here at Success, Success Insider. Um, if people want to check out more from you or maybe have you as their mentor, <laughs> where should they go? Hmm. Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I always like to help. Uh, help. Um, I like to share, you know, just like you, I like to share everything I learned and helped with my life. So far, I try to share it for free. Um, they can check my YouTube channel, Chernfinity, where I try to put as well uh, videos where I talk about uh, finding mentors and giving my tips and advice that I think really help. They can go and check my website, Chernfinity.com, where they can uh, basically find articles and podcasts with people who have either found great mentors or they're great mentors themselves. And yeah, they can check also a course we have about finding mentors where we can go really deep. We talk three hours about the strategy step by step. Um, and then again, go to the website. I think there should be a link there. And um, yes, just keep me up. Find me on Facebook, whatever you want to connect. Um, send me a message and I'll definitely like to, to get back to you and to really help you find the mentor that you want to help uh, have. Hmm. Amazing. Okay, Martin, once again, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been amazing to have you on as a guest. Thanks, Tim. And guys, amazing. thank you so much for tuning in. As always, follow your heart on this amazing advice from Martin and take action. Speak to you guys soon. Good luck. <laughs>